Hi, my name is Kirk Brown. I'm the Division Director of STEM Programs at San Joaquin County Office of Education. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, and give you a little bit about its biology and talk to you about a few things. So I thought maybe we could chat about what's the difference between a cell, a bacteria, and a virus. And a lot of people get confused sometimes. And what is a coronavirus and where does it come from? And how does it work and why does it attack our lungs? And why is it important to stay away from each other for a while? And maybe even how does soap work and how does soap affect one of these things? And what are some of the treatments we might be trying to, do, to think about? So if you think about what is the difference between a cell, a bacteria, and a virus is we are made of cells. And we're made of a very particular type of cell called a eukaryote cell. And a eukaryote cell has a membrane around the outside, and it has a nucleus inside. And inside that nucleus, we have our DNA. It's our inherited structure. And really what those are is a bunch of recipes that make proteins. And the little structures outside in the cytoplasm, this area outside the nucleus, little dots that I'm going to draw here, those are called ribosomes. And those are the places where protein is made. And there's a little highway out here, that the membrane structure called an endoplasmic reticulum, where things move around to get out to those ribosomes. And then we have little structures that make energy for us, called mitochondria, and they have a little membrane-bound structure in there. But the whole point here is those cells that make us up are around about 30 micrometers in size. And then if you compare that to a bacteria, so that's our cells... A bacteria is roughly about that big, and that bacteria is around 2 micrometers in size. And that little bacteria has inside of it some, some nucleic acid, some DNA, and maybe some ribosomes, and it just has this membrane and cell wall around the outside. That's it. So a bacteria responds to antibiotics because the antibiotic interferes with its cell wall formation, the outside of it, um, and also maybe interferes with those ribosomes and then producing proteins. So that's what stops it from living. And so antibiotics particularly target bacteria. Now, if you think of a virus, a virus is about the size of a speck. And that virus is about 0.1 micrometers in size. And all a virus has is um, a nucleic acid and a membrane and some proteins around the outside. Some very simple things. So they don't actually try to... Uh, produce things, they actually need to find a host cell to do that, and our cells would be the host cell. So if you look at what a coronavirus looks like, it has these little green spikes sticking out of the viral particles, and those little green spikes are called spike proteins. They're like keys, and those keys dock with a receptor in our cells, and if they find the right receptor, that opens the door for them to go inside of our cells. They make lots of copies of themselves, break open the cell, or at least scoot lots more out until they damage those cells, go to new cells, and that's what causes COVID-19, which is disease. So we believe that the natural host of those viral particles, the coronaviruses, are either bats or pangolins. And pangolins are like a scaly animal that walks around the jungle eating insects. And you all know what bats are. And we believe those things got into the human population via wet markets. And wet markets are these places where wild animals are, are brought to markets to be sold. They're killed out in the wild. They're brought in there for people to eat for food. And wet markets are in, in very dangerous because it's a place where normally we wouldn't come in contact with pangolins and, and bats um, in close proximity and maybe cut ourselves while cleaning them to, to eat for food, and that's how viruses sometimes jump from animal populations into humans. Another example of that is HIV. So HIV, you've heard of that before, that causes AIDS, and that immuno, human immunodeficiency virus began as something called SIV, or simian immunodeficiency virus, and that comes from monkeys, so it made its way from monkeys into humans. So whenever uh, these, we ever think of viruses that start, where do they start from? They usually start with animals like that and jumping from an animal population into humans. So if you look at the SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2 stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, 
Um, and there was a coronavirus one. The first SARS attack happened in Hong Kong and it spread around the world. And we, that, we got that under control pretty, pretty quickly with isolation. So this one has become pandemic and that, that's this SARS-CoV-2. And again, the COVID-19 is the name of the disease that's caused by this virus. And that, I believe that was named by the World Health Organization. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the virus itself. So if you look at why does it affect the lungs, and that's because the virus has these things called spike proteins. And I told you before, those are like keys, and they, they find a very specific lock that's called ACE2. And that ACE2 receptor is that little spike proteins binds to it, and that then lets it into the cell. And those cells that actually have those ACE2 receptors are happen to be in their alveolar cells, the cells that line our lungs. And so people that breathe this virus in, it docks to the ACE2 receptor, goes inside, and then this blue area here are, is RNA, and that's the instructions to make a whole bunch of new particles, and that's what they do. They make lots of new particles, and then they they start breaking out and, and leaving the cell, infecting new cells. And because if, if your lungs, imagine if the cells that line your lungs all becoming infected, that's why you need a ventilator and you have to go to the hospital sometimes. Now, sometimes the disease is not as severe, and sometimes it is severe. So if it is severe, you need to be able to go to the hospital. That's why we need to keep the infection numbers down so that our hospitals are not overwhelmed and they can treat people that really need to be treated. So that's one of the reasons we need to stay home right now. But if you think about what is it that we need to do, so if you were to get this virus, the way our bodies fight infections is they produce antibodies. An antibody has very specific structure, right? It's made of proteins, and those proteins look like a little Y. And these little proteins actually match perfectly these little spike proteins, right, like this. And when they do, that actually blocks those things and targets them for destruction by our cells. So imagine if our body produced those and it bind, bound to every one of those, including these down here, they wouldn't be able to dock with the lock, the ACE2 receptor, and therefore would not infect another cell. So one of the things that we're trying to do right now worldwide is to produce large numbers of those antibodies to give to people that actually have SARS so that it will, um, this COVID-19 infection, so it will stop this viral pro you know, progression here and their bodies can do it. Now, ultimately then, uh, over time, what we want to produce in laboratories is this little spike protein so that we can use that spike protein as a vaccine to inject in people and that will make them produce this, this like antibody, but they don't really have the virus. That's what, what it means to be vaccinated. So your body will naturally have the cells ready to produce those antibodies whenever you need them. So if you look at the, the actual spike protein itself, um, we know everything about it. So worldwide, people all over the world are figuring this out. The, Jason McClone, his researchers at the University of Texas at Austin, actually have give, know every little bit about that structure. So it, it's, we're going to be able to make a vaccine. It's just going to take time. But I mentioned before that um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about washing your hands. And if you think about what soap is, soap looks like a little lollipop, okay? Lots of little molecules like this. And when you wash your hands, those little soap lollipops, I think of those as swords. And those swords stick their tails inside your membranes in large numbers until they pop the cell. And this, in this case, if you use soap on the outside of this virus, it will stick those little tails inside the, all over that virus until it just explodes and will just destroy it physically. It does the same thing to bacteria as well. So when you wash your hands, you need to see, sing your ABCs at least two times slowly while you're washing your hands and make sure every bit of your hands is covered. Because if you kill these, even if you touch these viruses, you can kill them if you wash your hands properly. So we have to be very careful that we wash our hands, stay away from people, and let it go a couple of weeks so that anyone that actually has the virus can get over it and not be producing live viruses anymore and that it will die down in our population, and, and then we can all get over that, and then over time we'll produce the vaccine and be be good, okay? 
So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this virus today just to make sure you understood uh, the basic biology of, of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. So again, my name is Kirk Brown. I'm the Division Director of STEM Programs at San Joaquin County Office of Education. My email is kbrown at sjcoe.net. And shoot me an email if you have any more questions, anything I can help you with, or I'll certainly help point you in the right direction. So thanks again. Have a good day.